Hi folks, this is Sharon from Hummingbird Sewing. I'm here to teach you today uh, the 550E, the, the lesson on the actual software. Um, this is also a lesson for the 500E as well. This is uh, part two of this lesson. Part one just showed you how to do the bobbin and the threading, and here we're going to do the software what's built in. So this is the first, when you turn on the machine, this is the, the menu that you actually see. Um, this here represents the decorative stitches, this is your fonts, and this is your editing page. Um, so we're just gonna go into your editing page, um, and I'm going to get a retrieve a design, so we're gonna press the home button up here, and press the decorative stitch, or decorative design, whatever, and then this is the design that we're choosing today. Um, now, we have a menu across the bottom here. It starts with your hoop button. And this is the hoops here that uh, you have available to you. The, if it's not available to you, these buttons will actually be fogged out. Um, so we're okay, this is a small pattern, so this is a size 20, so we'll run with that. Uh, this next button is your copy button, so if we go ahead and press that, it will copy on top of the design that you have and just pull them apart by just like you saw me do with the, my finger. Also, any time that there's a green box around your design, that means that's the one that you're going to influence. So I'm going to put the green box on this one and actually we're going to go ahead and trash it. That little symbol there is the trash can. So there you go. I want to make another copy and we just press that and separate. Here this button represents uh, the shrinking or expansion of that design. So we can uh, go ahead and shrink it. It will shrink to about 80% or so and you can see the difference there or it will expand to 120. When you're happy with the size that you have, press OK. And at this point, you could press OK again, and you could stitch this out. So at any time that you're kind of happy with um, the design, you could press OK, and it will go into the ready to sew mode. Uh, we are going to go back into the, to the editing page because we have lots more to learn. So the next button we have is your rotating um, button. That's this one here. We're gonna press it, and you can um, you can twirl it around 45 de degrees, even in one degree increments, and back and forth. And when you're happy with what you have, you press OK. And once again, if I press this button and press OK, it will go into the ready to sew mode. This button here is your uh, flip button, and it will flip your design vertically. This one will flip it horizontally. This button here, oh, this one, this actually is fogged out because we don't have any letters, um, but let's get some in. So if we put in our letters, You'll see now that it is um, lit up, so we can influence that now. So if we were to go on to this, we could arc our letters here. We could arc it this way, or we could arc it the other way. See how the, the letters are scrunching up together? That's what this side is for. They will actually, if you press the up or down, they will separate, or the down will bring them together again. Press OK when you're happy with the design. To go on to this one, uh, this will actually group your design together. So if we press this button here, what this will do is put group them all together so that you could uh, play with it that way. We're not gonna do that today. If we wanted, this here is your file folder. We're going to actually save this beautiful design by saving it, we're going to call it ABC, press OK, and then it will be saved into the machine when we press OK. To retrieve this file, 
we press this button up here and you will actually see it on your second page. So this page, you don't see it at all, but then you'll see it on your second page and that's your square uh, 20B hoop. And there it is there. So you would just press that and then press OK. And once again, you can go into your ready to sew mode. The next button, this button is to change the coloring um, that you see. The ABC actually had a box around it. That's why you're seeing that here. But if we needed to um, use, we wanted another color, say in the alphabet, um, and you can't visualize what that color would look like, that's what this is for. And you can make this lighter or darker or whatever you want to do there. Press OK, and there you see that the, the color has changed. What this tells you, what this tells you is the layers. An embroidery design is made of layers. And when we put things all together, like we have here, we have different layers, different times that it's going to actually be used. And that's what this button is for. This is sort of an advanced um, button and it's not really recommended at the beginning that we use this button uh, quite yet. Can never remember what this button is for. So we'll move on to the next because I will and I'll know what it means in a minute. <laughs> this button here will take it right and put you right back into center. So anytime that you're kind of like, is, is that about center or you're kind of wondering about that, that button there will pop it right into center for you. This button here will actually take, so if we pile this into this here, I'll just set this uh, button up so that you understand what I'm doing. <clears throat> so say we have a design that requires this, oops, sorry, that requires this beautiful design in all four corners. So this is a, a perfect little button this button right here. This one's a perfect button if you have, um, like say quilters labels that you wanted to quilt, many of them. And of course a quilters label is just a small label. Um, you press this button and it will actually put all of them, all of the designs in the quadrants of the hoop for you. Once again, press okay, it will go into the ready to sew mode. This button here, um, you can actually press it and what that will do is actually sew all one color and therefore you wouldn't need to change out the colors. Um, so that's what that one's for. Okay, so we really love this design right now. So we're going to take it into the ready to sew mode. Now we have another series of menus here or buttons, should I say that we're going to look at. But first, we're going to just read what this says here. This is in the ready to sew mode already. So if I was to press the start and stop, this is the printout or the stitch out that I will get. Um, it is 159 by 158 millimeters. This can be changed into uh, inches in your settings, um, but I haven't done that yet. And um, this is, it has three colors. It's going 600 uh, stitches per minute, which is the, about the right rate. It's going to take 26 minutes to stitch out, and that just means your tension. We have 12,162 stitches in here, and then these are the colors that you'll be using. So let's go on to the menu. Uh, what the menu does, and when you toggle this, this is actually a toggle, so you can have it look like this, or you could also, um, have it look like this. And what this will do is actually show you which um, stitch out is going to be printed or stitched out next. We have this button here, which is your trace button. Um, when you have your hoop loaded into your machine, um, this will actually trace out where the, the, the design is going to go um, on your hoop. 
This here, if you needed the machine to move up just a little bit because you're trying to um, maybe fit it onto a shirt or something, that's what this is for. This toggle will either show you the uh, spools that it's using or it will uh, toggle up just a little bit because you're trying to miss a collar or a pocket or something like that. This is your rotate um, button. What it does is it um, will, if you have um, hooped your piece a little bit skewed, this will help you realign it. You can learn all about that in your, in your instruction manual. This is a list, oh sorry, this button here is a list of um, spools that we will be using today. As you can see, they get repeated. So sometimes this is a, a very long list of like 30 uh, spools, but you'll notice that they have been repeated. Um, nothing to be that upset about. Um, this here, this button here is, you can affect your tension. This symbol always means tension. And this here means your jump stitches. It will, in two, two millimeters, it will jump your, it will um, actually cut your, um, your threads. So we'll just leave it that. And this here is just your park button. When we press this, it will come up with an instruction on parking, which means that you're, you're going to actually move your machine. Um, so it will put the carriage, this carriage, back into the locked position so the machine can be moved. You'll find this button here, and you'll also find it on the home page. When we press home, you'll find it there as well. Okay, so I'm just going to erase all of this. We're going to play with our fonts for a little bit. We're going to go into our font button. So I pressed home and then the font button. A, B, C. We'll bring that in like I already did. And then what you'll see here is that you can bring it in horizontally. You can bring it in vertically. So if I was to press this and go A, B, C, I've just brought it in vertically, okay? Also um, here in this button here, you'll have small, medium, and large. Right now it's on medium, but if I press it, I can make small, but, uh, small letters, large letters, and there's my medium one. Press OK and it'll come on to your um, onto your screen, onto your editing page. And it came in vertically because I didn't press that button back again, but that's okay. So if we'll just press it back. Um, this button here is for your lowercase and uppercase um, letters. So there's your uppercase and here's your lowercase, okay? Here is where, actually here is where you'll, you'll see all the different fonts that you have. You can pick any of them and you'll get your, your script or whatever one you pick. Um, you will actually have access to 11 more fonts in your um, embroidery, embroidery editor. Okay, and that's a little bit about fonts. I want to take you into the settings right now. Right now we have the common settings, which is, this is just your screen contrast. You can play with this uh, depending on the lighting, things you want to make darker or lighter. I don't know if you can quite see that on the screen. Um, the volume, you can, you can make it lower. You can turn it off if you wish. Or you can make it louder as well if you, if you can't quite hear the volume. This is where you would change it from inches to millimeters. I'm going to change it to inches. <laughs> this is your touch screen calibration. What this is, is if you happen to have something that's going on with your hands, maybe like arthritis or something like that, you can actually press this button here. And when you see the X, you're going to press it. What that's doing is it's telling the machine just how hard you can press uh, the screen and calibrate it to your touch. This is not a necessary step if your hands are fine and, and um, 
you, you're not having an issue with your with your hands. Uh, this is just the formats. There's two formats. There's the USB and there is a built-in memory in this machine as well. Standby timer just means that this will close down in 10 minutes. It will just go to sleep and the start and stop button it will still be on unless I turn off the machine. The upper thread sensor is um, just telling you um, that when it breaks. So then you'll have a little symbol that says, okay, a broken thread, that's what that's for. So we'll leave it on. Your sewing light will leave on and quiet mode will turn off because we wanna hear the sounds that the machine is making. Clean your bobbin message, leave that on. Um, the, that is a good little thing to have um, if the machine is detecting any kind of threads that have ended up in the bobbin uh, hook area. So leave that on. You can change the color of the background of where you're working. Um, that's fine. And if you've messed up or want to go back to defaults, you just press this button here. Now this, this button up at the top is for the embroidery part. Um, this is the auto tension. Um, you don't need to play with these ones, this one here. Um, it's pretty much set where it should be. Um, if you're finding that there is a bit of an issue, you could either increase or lower depending on what's actually happening with the, the stitch out. Remaining bobbin thread. I usually turn this one off and it is off already. It will, you, what you'll see when you first show, when you first go into the setting is you'll see it on two. That is the default. Um, what I find is that the thread that is used on the, on the bobbin, the remaining thread, is um, a little too long for um, this, a little bit too long before it will actually tell me that the, um, the thread is out. So I actually turn it off and I pay attention to um, the thread myself. The speed, maximum speed is 600 um, stitches per minute. You can increase this. What this does is uh, it'll stitch out quicker, but it is wear and tear on your machine. So we do recommend that you keep it at 600. You can go slower too if you're going through something that's fairly thick. That's a wise thing to do. Uh, one stitch stop, um, what that does is it'll just do the one stitch and wait for you to um, cut the thread and we don't need to have that on right now. Um, consecutive color grouping, it will group all of your colors together and we have that on right now too and you don't need to have that difference, that changed. A hoop confirmation just um, gives you a little bit of a warning um, before you're actually going to sew out. What this does is um, just gets you aware of the machine again. I, it's a good thing to keep on. And the hoop calibration, that kind of takes care of itself as well. Thread cutting is on. We always want to cut our threads. It will cut to an eighth of an inch. And then you can read the other things that are there. You can just keep those the way they are. All this thread selection is for is if you wanted your, um, if you are somebody who uses say um, Robinson Anton um, polyester, you could press this and then when your um, designs come up on the, on the actual machine, you'll see them in the A A Robertson Anton numbers. Um, I don't usually mess with this part. And the grid line um, is for the um, editing page. You can have it on or off. We usually just keep it on. And this grid size is how big the actual little squares are. So right now it is set up so that it is the same size as your template. And your resume mode, I have that on. What that, if I was working on say a large project, um, having that on will just give me a bit of a reminder at the beginning of my work. It'll come up and say, do you want to resume the last pattern? And then I say yes or no. So there we are for today. Um, oh, just going through one more thing. I see the lock button here. This lock button is for when we change our uh, needle. 
and um, it is important to actually engage it so that um, the start and stop does not work when we change the needle. So that's all I have for you today. I do hope that you um, are enjoying your machine and um, if you have any other questions, you can just give us a call at Hummingbird Sewing and um, we can try and help you out with that. And uh, thank you for watching today and enjoy. Bye.